What's good, everybody? This is your Cosmic Homegirl with the weekly forecast for the week starting April 18th of 2021 and ending on April 25th of 2021. Before we get started, just a reminder that I do have 2021 yearly horoscopes on sale through the rest of the month of April because this is my birthday month. Hey, it's the month of my solar return. So um, I usually try to do at least some little sale or something <laughs> around my birthday. Um I'm not doing accepting any new orders for personal readings at this moment. I'm still catching up with a lot of people. But in the meanwhile, if you want some good insight from, from myself, I do recommend this uh, horoscope. They are $10.99 right now versus $15.99. They are two hours worth of going over the most important transits for the year of 2021. So this is for your sign. I recommend you getting your rising sign if you know it. If you don't know, you can still get your sun sign and it's still very accurate. I do go over specifically love and specifically money at the end of each horoscope too to tell you guys the hottest times of the year in 2021 for those. So um, definitely check them out on my website. So indigomoonastrology.com on the horoscopes page and I'll, I will leave a link. All right. So what's going on this week? Um... First of all, thank you guys for the uh, positive responses to my last video. I haven't gotten a chance to read everyone's comments yet, but, you know, I've read some and there's a lot of words of support and encouragement and everything and very kind words. So uh, thank you guys very much. And I will be going through the comments as soon as I can. But um, just a big general thank you for everybody who listened because, you know, it's not easy to just say a whole bunch of personal shit <laughs> uh, publicly, especially for a Scorpio rising person. So um, I really appreciate um, all the support on that. So, yeah, let's get to this week's forecast. What's cracking? So... Um, first of all, on the eight, there's actually a lot going on this week, you guys. A lot of aspects and and planetary shifts and ingresses to cover. Um, we do have, you know, we start out the week with a, a Cancer Moon. Here she is, uh, Miss Cancer Moon. You know, making people a little more emotional, more attached to their families or attached to you know whoever they feel a nurturing bond with for some people that is their mother okay or if you are a mother maybe your kids are you're like more you know babying them and more attached to them and stuff like that or um it could just be people's appetites are increased they want like the good stuff you know they don't just want a little dried up snack okay you want like whole meals all day long like the good shit and that's also you know uh venus and taurus is contributing to that along with the moon and cancer listen it's it's been hard to keep up with the <laughs> with the healthy diets you guys like if you feel me on that then let me know all the really rich foods that's what people crave just when it's taurus season in general um when it, but venus and taurus and then the moon and cancer hello hello Hello, it's really hard to keep up with, you know, just uh, if you have any type of dietary restrictions or you are just trying to keep up with your figure. Both of these signs, Taurus and Cancer, love vol voluptuousness. Okay, so yeah, that's what Miss Venus and Miss Moon are encouraging us to, um, to get with, <laughs> at least at this moment. So also on the 18th, we do have the sun and Mercury together. So as I'm recording this on the 18th, the sun and Mercury are together, like super close. They're both at 28 degrees and then soon uh, 29 degrees of Aries. And by the way, I was trying to do this as a live stream, you guys, um, so that I can, you know, people are like, oh, you never show your face on air. And, and I said, hey, now that I have like my own space, and privacy and everything i'll be doing that but i was trying to mess with the new live stream settings and they're just it was some bullshit man like oh my god it was a pain in the ass so um i have to do some more research and mess it, it used to be so easy i know i sound like an old lady saying this but going live on youtube used to be so easy they had this little like tool kit thingy on the side and you could sh screen share and do all this stuff now it's just like it, you got to do this and then have three different apps open. It's it's like a fucking pain in the asshole. Like I'm not going to lie. So 
I'll figure something out. But until then, hey, just voiceovers, you know, the knowledge is the knowledge, okay? So anyway, um, yeah, the 18th, the sun and Mercury remain super duper close together, like the whole day. They, they both shift from 28 to 29 degrees of Aries. And remember, the 29th degree is the anoretic degree or the critical degree, the very last degree of a sign. So people can feel quite on edge under 29 degree energy. I test it out every every month with like, even when the moon is at 29 degrees of a sign, I've noticed it feels edgy. And I observe people around me and I see that they are edgy and on edge. And then once the planet shifts to the, the next degree, which is zero degrees of the next sign, then it's like, ah, you know, a sigh of relief. It's like they got like a tranquilizer shot or some shit. You know what I mean? Like, first they're all super hype and rah, 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 rah. and then, you know, you get a tranquilizer shot. Ah, oh, yeah. Or somebody takes an actual shot of like liquor or something to kind of relax them or whatever. You take a chill pill literally or something. That's what that 29th degree shifting from that into zero degrees is like. So Sun and Mercury together um they increase our mental activities people can be talking more talking faster talking louder especially at 29 degrees of loud ass aries okay so um yeah that's how it is um sun and mercury together everybody feels now mercury rules the signs of gemini and of virgo so everybody can have kind of a a taste of what it's like to be those signs um, if you were born under those signs or if you were born with the sun conjoined to Mercury in your own chart, like a lot of people are because Mercury and the sun tend to travel pretty close together, you know, uh, very often in the zodiac. Um, but yeah, sun conjunct Mercury can r really make you kind of like nervous or you start something and then you go start something else and then you go start something else and pretty soon you have all these different projects around you tasks around you that are like incomplete and you're scattering and then you're overwhelmed like oh my god how did it get to this and then you just want to abandon ship <laughs> just like abandon it all yeah that is mercurial energy no doubt about it and that is what a lot of people are feeling today so don't beat yourself up if you find yourself being kind of scattered, kind of like a Tasmanian devil all over the place, um, people could be very easily bored under this energy too. So, or you just feel like you have to be a busybody. You have to do this and that and this and that. That's what Sun and Mercury together can do. Yeah, they're going to be exact again. Um, this is Pacific time in the US around 7 p.m. Pacific time. Look at this, 29 and 15 of Aries. Lord have mercy, this evening is of, of the 18th people could be feeling quite intense indeed and um yeah just you know know that this too shall pass things will start shifting the next day when on the 19th the sun mercury and the sun both move into taurus so taurus season quote unquote officially begins but you know how we do we already know venus she stepped into taurus last week starting off the season kicking it off you know making us crave more of the good stuff in life the good food drinks scents um candles blankies clothes like everything and you know everything is beautiful around you or you want everything to be beautiful around you when venus is in one of her home signs so her home signs are taurus and libra so she's at she's she, Little Miss Venus is doing her thing right now. And I have noticed um, whenever I have gone online and like scrolled a little bit uh, that people are posting more pictures of themselves in nature and just appreciation for nature, more beautiful nature pictures because Taurus is an earth sign. It's one of the most um, nature oriented earthy signs, you know, uh, the nature, super nature oriented signs are Taurus, Virgo and Sagittarius. They're the biggest nature lovers. So um, Venus being in Taurus and Venus being what we enjoy, that's, you know, it's very evident, very apparent right now. But yeah, Mercury shifts into Taurus early on the 19th. And you know, Mercury is communication and how we talk and everything. So uh, our, our speaking goes from 
loud, aggressive, blunt, direct Aries, uh, quick to speak, foot in mouth syndrome Aries, to very much more calm, slower paced Taurus. Um, so, you know, Taurus, it, it contemplates, Tor uh, Mercury and Taurus contemplates things a lot before they say things. And people call Taurus energy boring. And hey, yo, maybe I might be a little bit biased because I personally have a lot of Taurus energy. And, um, you know, and I understand, so I understand Taurus is very well. But Tauruses really just take their time to absorb everything. Um, they take their time to speak because they, they're analytical as an earth sign they're observant you know and um they like to think about pros and cons first before they act or speak um i remember when i used to work in you know one of these financial jobs that i had in in a smaller office and um all you know i was working as an accountant and there was one girl who start you know we started around the same time and she's an aries moon and, you know, so anytime they send out an email, who wants to volunteer to do this, this and this and all this big long ass paragraph you got to read of whatever the hell it was. She would I, I don't even think this chick even read everything before she would email back, reply all, oh, me, I want to do it, you know, or she would reply to them. And then I would think about it for a while, you know. Weigh out the pros and cons, and I would respond, you know what, I'm actually down for this, you know, count me in, and they would respond back, oh, well, Miss Aries Moon already volunteered every single time, Miss Aries Moon volunteered first, and I'm like, did this bitch even read, <laughs> did she even think before she hit the reply and the send buttons, probably not, she probably doesn't know what the hell she's doing, just wants to be first at something, you know, so that's the difference between Aries and Taurus energy. It, not saying it's wrong. Aries actually, you know, they're daring and bold and they're adventurous. So they will jump into some things and just figure it out. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, in the corporate world, that's more valued than people that take their time and think and contemplate. I've noticed a lot. Okay, unfortunately. That's why I'm not there anymore, right? So anyway... Um, yeah, so Aries, Mercury, <clears throat> excuse me, Mercury going from Aries to Taurus is, uh, we are thinking more and taking our time and we are speaking at lower, <laughs> more softer volumes. I sure hope so because some of these fucking neighbors, y'all, I'm telling you, like I can have all doors and windows and everything closed and I'll still hear them and I'm like, are you serious? Like, why is this necessary? This volume, I just don't understand. <laughs> so, yeah, um, it's it's softer spoken, you know, talking about art, talking about music, talking about, you know, the, the foods and drinks and stuff that you love. Um, that's Mercury in Taurus. So Mercury is going to be in Taurus until from uh, April 19th until May 3rd. And as I said earlier, the sun moves into Taurus. Also, um, on April 18th, 18th, what the hell? No, 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 sorry. So, okay. On April 19th, a little bit later on, right? Um, the sun moves into Taurus. So the sun and Mercury are still conjoined. So it's still kind of hyper chihuahua energy as far as how you're thinking and, you know, speaking, but it's not as hyper as it was in Aries. Um, but it's still in effect though. But yeah, the sun joins Mercury and Venus and Taurus. Hallelujah. Okay. It's like still the vibe when the sun switches into Taurus is much more smooth, much more calm. Um, you know, taking your time, contemplating and, and all that stuff. Okay. I don't want to be repetitive here but yes sun and Taurus until May 20th you know Mercury only stays in a sign when he's moving normally for a few weeks so he gets bored easily he's like oh I'm so done with this Taurus stuff <laughs> you know and then he hops into Gemini where he thrives and he's so happy and he's throwing out memes and jokes and stuff everywhere but anyway, yeah, so um, Sun and Mercury entering Taurus on the 19th. Beautiful, beautiful energy. 
Now, later on that day, on the 19th, we have the moon moving into Leo. And she will be um, strutting through Leo for a few days. It's like right... Yeah, it's like, you know, the end of the, the day on the 19th where I'm at. But for some of you guys, it might be 420 when the moon moves into Leo. So um, moon and Leo days, you know, people want to show off a little bit more. They're like fussing with their hair more, taking more selfies. They are more romantic. They're more ooh, like the little squealy voice trying to flirt and just be cute or whatever. It doesn't matter if you're masculine or feminine. Masculine or f feminine. <laughs> See the sun and Mercury together. I'm like, ah, I can't take it. I cannot speak. So anyway, um, yeah, the moon in Leo for a few days. So this is another energy to, you know, get in touch with your inner child and all of that stuff, right? And yeah, to strut your stuff, okay? Um, just try not to be too boastful, bragging, and annoying, and do you know who I am, and name dropping, and all that stuff. Well, the moon is in Leo. But yeah, um, 420, for those who celebrate 420... Uh, the vibe is just right for your activities, for your little activities, okay? Because we have the sun, Mercury, and Venus all in Taurus and Uranus all in Taurus. And Taurus rules the marijuana, okay? Um, plants <laughs> and chilling and having the munchies. So that's, Taurus rules all of that. So it's a perfect day you know, perfect vibe, perfect alignment in the sky for 420. And then Uranus rules um, doing things that are just weird and different and outside the box and being your, your individual self with no fucks given, right? So, you know, Mercury is technically already starting to conjoin Uranus and Venus as well. So people will just be rebellious and doing what they want to, you know? So, um... And the moon in Leo, it gives people a happy, more happy-go-lucky vibe. And, uh, you know, wanting to show off a little bit and be a little more animated and stuff. So, perfect vibe for what people are doing on 420. But the moon will be opposing Saturn, though. And that can kind of, um, that can make people think in more serious ways and think about serious topics and maybe start. Because you know how sometimes when people smoke, it opens up their mind more to more things and um so people's minds will go towards like society and government and conspiracies and and all that stuff with this moon and saturn opposition from leo to aquarius a lot of interesting topics can come up you know un uh amongst all that smoke in the air <laughs> so yeah that is that day okay all right, so now we move to the 22nd. And this is when Venus conjoins Uranus exactly. Lord have mercy. I don't know what, I don't know whether to look forward to all this Taurus, Uranus stuff, you know, conjunctions or to hide under the covers for them, honey. Okay, I just, I don't know because, you know, Taurus is, Taurus energy doesn't really dig change like sudden plan changes okay uh but sudden changes hail to the no so uranus is the king of sudden changes and surprises so that's why i'm like oh my god am i gonna be hiding on this day because i am 10 degrees of taurus two times in my chart and 10 degrees of scorpio so i'm just like yo what crazy madness is going to be going on like i need any fucking more right but um for the for everybody though venus and uranus conjoining in taurus on the 22nd now this is building up so pretty much you know the whole week we're going to be feeling the the uranian vibes a little extra with all of these planets starting to hit uranus and taurus what that means is um yeah, there's more rebellion, more rebellious attitudes and more people wanting to do things like, um, say, F the system and, you know, talk about outside the box things and especially about uh, things that Taurus rules like money, 
I was just listening to a YouTube video while I was prepping for this where they were talking about um, they were interviewing these these young girls who make a killing on OnlyFans and uh, these, you know, guys who are a little bit older were interviewing them and asking them, well, what are you going to do? Are you investing all the money that you make off of OnlyFans? Because do you really think you're going to be able to do this forever? You might be balling out of control at this moment, but what about the long run? Are you, you know what I'm saying? Because looks fade. And I think, I don't want to get too deep into this conversation, but I'm just saying like this, this is probably a topic that'll come up more amongst uh, discussions, you know, this in discussions amongst people because Taurus rules money, right? Uranus and Taurus, Uranus is freedom, liberation, doing your own thing. And if it's in the, the sign of money, well, a lot of people are having the freedom and liberation to do their own thing and make money off of it. Um, and then also, you know, there's the big booms in cryptocurrency and stuff like that, which astrologers have been predicting. And it, you know, and I don't mean to sound like so holier than thou and like, oh, I just knew everything because I know astrology. <laughs> but it just like blows my mind how people can dismiss astrology as some bullshit thing that chicks use to just for like their crushes and dudes may use for a, a corny ass pickup line. It goes deep, man. And then people will act like they are discovering some new phenomenon when they see a wave and a trend coming and act like this big ass know it all. And it's like astrologers are sitting here like we've been saying this for years. We already have foreseen, foresaw or whatever the word is, some shit. But, you know, but I guess we're crazy. We just believe in some sort of fairy tale fantasy pixie dust throwing shit i guess you know by by talking about this stuff ahead of time but anyway i digress the waves and trends right now which uranus rules are in taurus which rules money uh uranus is technology digital okay um and then taurus is money so you do the math and that's what's popping right so Anyway, um, these guys were telling, asking these girls, well, are you investing money in maybe cryptocurrency or anything like that? And they just gave these dudes blank stares. And these dudes are trying to tell them, look, your looks will fade. But I think a lot of, um, it, because plastic surgery is so much more common now and easily accessible than it was years ago, I think even a lot of, you know, lot, they were talking to a girl who's like 20, a girl who's 23, they probably don't. They're like, what? What do you mean my looks are going to fade? I could just continue to get Botox and Juvederm and, you know, injections and this procedure, that procedure and BBLs and all this shit that's so trendy. Like my looks will not fade for a long ass time, you know, because I can always maintain them through plastic surgery. So they're probably giving him a blank stare like, the fuck you mean? Like I can make money off of my body forever, <laughs> you know? So they were just trying to tell these girls about investing. Like, do you invest your money or are you just, you know, making a quick buck and just thinking in short terms with your finances? Um, so thinking about and talking about investments and more outside the box ways to make money and what to do with it and stuff. Those are big time discussions that will emerge more when we have more of this Taurus um, energy in the air conjoining Uranus, and then also squaring Saturn. Saturn is in Aquarius, which is ruled by Uranus, so it rules some of the same things, technology, anything digital, and anything that's a wave and a trend and whatnot, right? And Saturn is about the long haul. So expect more of those discussions to come up, not just on the internets, but um, maybe amongst you and your friends or, you know, people that, that surround you, you may hear them discuss things like that because all this Taurus energy is going to be squaring Saturn at the same time it's conjoining Uranus. Um, so it's pretty interesting stuff, man. That was a long ass video. Like I have work to do, so I had to cut it off. I'm only halfway through, but I'm like, yo, this is getting so interesting. I would like to hear more discussions like this. Um, so yeah, Venus conjoining Uranus though, this can be, you know, Venus rules love, but Venus rules money. Um, she rules your looks and stuff like that. So people can be like, um, 
maybe wanting to do something different with their looks, maybe changing up their style a little bit, at least for a few days. Maybe some people can be thinking about tattoos and piercings and, and stuff like that that they want to get or like a crazy new haircut or hair color, hairstyle, something like that, or accessories that are just a little different and out there. Anything with like lightning bolts and neon and, you know, stuff that's Uranus ruled. So, um, but also you can have some sudden attraction to someone or someone suddenly attracted to you. Just be careful with that because... I have seen and experienced, okay, experienced, <laughs> all right, Uranian energy when it comes to love and attraction and dating doesn't always last long. Somebody shows up like a lightning, lightning struck in the sky, you know, it doesn't, what do they say? Lightning doesn't strike twice in the same spot or some old people shit like that. I don't know. Whatever that saying is, meaning it's rare. When lightning strikes somewhere, it's like a rare, you're not going to see it exactly the same again, repeat itself. That's how Venus and Uranus energy could be when it comes to love and dating and, you know, attraction and all that. Um, I've met people under Uranus and Venus transits, you know, and it's like one second they're all about you and the next second, poof, they're gone, especially with this dumbass ghosting culture that's so popping nowadays with Neptune being in Pisces. You know, then they go ghost on you and then they pop up again acting all interested and it's like, dude, what the fuck? So Venus and Uranus can bring those type of attractions to where it's either them or you, you know, maybe it could be you, you're, you're like feeling somebody and it's like, oh my God, we have all these things in common. There's all these sparks, all this attraction. And then within a couple of days, you're like, ew, this mother get on my nerves. He doesn't know how to talk. You know, he's this, he's that, whatever annoys you personally. So within a flash, you know, something sparks up and then within another flash, ooh, it's gone, <laughs> you know? So just be careful with that. Uh, Venus and Uranus can mean sudden gains or losses of money too. So, you know, this could be a decent day depending upon where this transit is in your personal chart. If it lands in a good money spot, doesn't have any crazy ugly aspects to anything that rules money in your chart, okay? For some people, it can be a good day to um, maybe create a sudden gaining or winning or windfall of money, like playing some sort of lottery or doing, I don't know, buying some shares and stocks and crypto, this, that, and the other or whatever. I'm still learning, learning the language of it all, okay? Forgive me if I sound like a dumbass, but whatever you can do to make some sudden money or this could be a flash like an idea that comes to you in a flash of how to make more money um maybe you don't get the money on that day but it's like an idea because venus is also associated with creativity so this is on the 22nd you guys people could just be feeling this can also mean sudden breakups for some people too just to be honest unfortunately you're, but maybe the breakup may not even last either. I've seen that happen with people <laughs> under these type of transits too. It's like, suddenly I fucking hate you after such and such amount of years. Bye, you know? And then um, like, I just want to be free. And then a few days later, it's like, I miss my person. And then they just, you know, breakup doesn't last. Now, that's on the 22nd. Um, what else on the 22nd? The moon goes into Virgo on this day. Okay, so the moon goes into Virgo on the 22nd, stays there until the 24th. Yeah, so um, moon and Virgo days are, you know, more humble than moon and Leo days, obviously. Moon and Virgo days are ones to where um, we kind of clean up the messes of our our moon and Leo party days. Because <laughs> Leo rules partying, right? and celebrating and stuff so moon and virgo days like all right back to work uh, i gotta calculate these bills i gotta sweep the floor oh my god there's laundry and there's oh my god i have to file this and that and wash dishes so moon and virgo days can have us more in that vibe um moon, moon and virgo days people could be more helpful like willing to help help others out if they need it you know, you may bitch and complain about it, but you'll still help. <laughs> so that's what that energy is about. All right. 
Now let's skip ahead to the 24th. There's a lot of stuff. No, no, no. The 23rd. My bad. The 23rd, Mars goes into Cancer. But before that, on the 22nd, Mars is at the 29th degree of Gemini. Remember what I said about that 29th degree, y'all? 29th degree is really edgy. And it's in Gemini, which is words, wordsmiths, you know? Um, so people could be really edgy with their words and, and fight back with their words and be very, uh, very good with the comebacks, being very witty and stuff. <laughs> Like, real swift with things, you know? But yeah, Mars at the 29th degree, very on edge, very just, like, quick to pop off. So just be careful, be mindful of that energy, okay? But yeah, the next day, this is when Mars goes into Cancer, and Mars, stay, he stays in Cancer uh, from, the, from April 23rd until June 2nd. Wow, that's a long, kind of, seems kind of like a, a long time. It's just like a month and a half or so that he stays in a sign. So Mars and Cancer, uh, people, Mars is defense. People will be defensive over their families, maybe their mother figures. You know, if you're a maternal figure yourself, then maybe over your children or your pets, your plants, whoever and whatever that you nurture, you're very protective over. Mars and Cancer, just, just you know, like, imagine how cancer is represented by the crab that has a hard shell that's protective. Um, Mars is associated with protection and, def you know, defense. So people are much more, like, defensive and protective over their own. So whatever your own means to you. For some people, Mars and cancer is, you know, whoever they consider to be their people based on race or culture or country or neighborhood or whatever people are more protective over theirs it doesn't matter what that person did they're gonna be like leave my peoples alone so yeah mars and cancer brings more of that vibe out um we will especially need to be careful once mars starts to form an opposition to pluto and capricorn like in may some sometime in may i believe let me see uh yeah when Mars forms an up, or it's June, right? Is it June? Yeah. Hold up. I wrote through June 2nd. Stupid. Oh my God. I meant June 12th. <laughs> my bad. Through June 12th. Okay. But anyway, yeah. Mars will be forming that opposition to Pluto in June. Like beginning of June to mid-June. Mars and Pluto opposition. So this can mean like, you know, people defending their own against like the governments and stuff like that which is capricorn but we'll talk about that more when we get there but yeah just mars and cancer has that vibe overall though don't fuck with mine me me and mines and my peoples and and my house and all of that okay um so yeah that's mars and cancer now let's talk about the 24th we have um the moon goes into Libra on this day. The moon goes into Libra. And we'll have a moon and Mars square. Dun, dun, dun. A little bit of tension in the air. All right. Um, but yeah, the moon goes into Libra for a few days. And moon and Libra days, you know, more days to spend time, extra time in the mirror, checking out your hair, checking out your, you know, your eyebrows, which Libra <laughs> rules. <laughs> Libra rules the eyebrows. I'm telling you, because it's like anything that's paired, that's a pair on in your body, on your body, in or on your body. They say the Libra rules, and Libra definitely rules the eyebrows. I've noticed Libra men with Libra energy are the main dudes to do their eyebrows, and you know maybe have them waxed or a little bit thinner than usual and stuff like that. Or, or I even know like a. A dude who's uh, rising and Venus are in Libra very closely and they naturally just have like very nice thin, thinner eyebrows, you know, not the most masculine <laughs> eyebrows, but it makes them very, very um, still, you know, a, a naturally good looking and like clean cut looking type of a guy, you know, Libra is ruled by Venus. And so if someone's a masculine man, but they got this Venus energy pop in, like, hello, they're not going to be completely just a, a bruh smashing red solo cups on their head or anything like that. You know, they're not going to be completely scruffy, 
like burly big ass you know muscular dude they're gonna have you know they're gonna have a little bit of um a little bit of softness to them nothing wrong with that in my opinion anyway so moon and libra days people are gonna be more relationship oriented more partnership oriented and maybe not want to do things by themselves you know including little tasks and errand errands and stuff they may, may want to just like run out you know and have a with my one of my aunties calls a running buddy <laughs> have a running buddy somebody to go with you to uh run your errands so you can chitter chatter with them and stuff or whatever um but yeah that's moon and libra days i don't want to you know talk too too much about that there's still a lot more to cover or a few more things to cover um okay so the moon is in libra through the 26th and i'm covering through the 25th also on the 24th this is when mercury is in a conjunction with uranus too it's like super early when it's exact so i guess we can say you know the 23rd the 24th we have uh, oh look 333 dope um we have this Mercury and Uranus exact conjunction. Yeah. So it's like, you know, really late the 23rd and real early the 24th. But it's still super popping on both days. Uh, where Mercury and Uranus are together. So what that can equate to is very mad scientist energy when it comes to how you're thinking and what you're thinking about. The, if, if think outside the box was a transit... Mercury and Uranus is that motherfucking guy, okay? <laughs> that guy right there, that combo, Mercury and Uranus, you know, because Mercury is your thinking, your thoughts and everything, and Uranus is sudden strikes of lightning, you know, lightning bolts striking your mind and lighting it up with ideas that are different. <clears throat> Excuse me, talking about subjects, you know, that maybe are not always talked about. Rising above situations in an in a, a, an emotionally detached manner to dissect them and to really observe them. Okay, that's Mercury and Uranus together. When everybody else is crying and bugging out for whatever reason, Mercury and Uranus will make you take a step back. Be like, hmm, why are these humans crying? And you kind of feel like a robot or an alien or somebody like, in, you know, like observing and investigating human behavior. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's how Mercury and Uranus energy acts. So we can all kind of have that type of a vibe on that day. And this is another, you know, transit that builds up and it's just exact on this day and like super potent. All right. But yeah, this is another transit. It's like whatever I do what I want. I'm, I'm free. I'm independent. Don't tell me what to do. Yada, 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 whatever. Mercury and Uranus. Um, I would say be careful driving. You know, Venus, she's in the mix, which can kind of help this transit to not be so like erratic and crazy like it normally can be. She smooths things out, makes things nice and pleasant and says, no, maybe we shouldn't do that because it might rock the boat and we don't want that. Right. So Mercury and Uranus together, though, when they're like super close, I would still say be careful driving because Mercury rules driving. Uranus is sudden weird out of the blue stuff happening okay Alrighty then and then we have we have on the 25th on this day mercury and venus are super duper close together let's see well the 24th it looks like you know the 24th and and the 25th they're super close right why did I write the 25th? My notes are just whack. What the hell was I thinking? <laughs> Writing wrong dates and shit. Hold on. My bad. Okay. So we have Mercury and Venus, you know, she's up to 12 degrees. And then Mercury quickly catches up because he moves pretty fast. All right. So let's just say, you know, late on the 24th and into the 25th, we have Mercury and Venus. They're still very close together. I was trying to line them up exact by degree, but whatevs. Okay, so they're very, very close together. There we go. Aha. There we go. Okay, so yeah, the 24th, 25th, Mercury and Venus together, exact, very close. Okay, and they're at 13 degrees. 
But um, on, you know, the, pretty much the whole weekend, they are making close squares to Saturn and Aquarius, both of them together. So this could be people thinking, which is Mercury, about money and relationships, which is Venus. And they have some challenges as far as um, they have some challenges, which is Saturn. Maybe because, you know, these two are conjoined to Uranus still by degree. Technically, they're receiving that Uranium buzz, which is like, do what you want to do. Fuck everybody and society, you know, just go your own way. Just wild out. Right. But they're also having these beams of hater energy <laughs> that's all like mad faced and stuff being sent from Saturn. This like, no, you're not going to wild out. No, you're not going to just do this and this and not think about the consequences and how people feel and how and the long run. Like, what about the long run? That's Saturn. Okay, so he is squaring Mercury and Venus together. So Mercury and Venus is like you know, what can we do to bring love into our lives? Or um, maybe you could be thinking about, oh, I love this person or I love my relationship that I already have or whatever. And then Saturn is like, well, hold up though. (laughs) Are they in it for the long haul? Do they respect your boundaries? Saturn is about boundaries. Do they respect your boundaries? Do you respect their boundaries? There's serious questions that are asked when it comes to Saturn. So he's you know, sending those questions to Mercury and Venus. And it could be with money too. Like I mentioned that example of that podcast where, you know, these guys are asking these younger girls, they're like, oh, you know, Mercury and Venus could be them. Oh yeah, I make money on OnlyFans. And, you know, I am an entrepreneur and a business person because of that. And then Saturn is like, well, hold up. What about the long run though? Are you investing your money? What are you spending it on? You're you're paying high rent at, you know, a fancy apartment and, and paying for a fancy car and all that. Where is that going to get you in the long run, girly? And Venus and, and Mercury together are like, oh, my God, I just want to be cute. Leave me alone. You're so mean, Saturn. So, yeah, this can have us really thinking about Venusian things in a more serious manner. And yeah, Uranus, he's still trying to send us those lightning bolts, though. He's right there behind us like, but hold up. What about freedom? And what about throwing our middle finger up? You know, what about doing what we want? (laughs) But these two are moving away from Uranus and they're like, "Uh, I don't know. Saturn is kind of kicking some some serious knowledge though like we kind of have to start listening to him we're we're, you know so because they're closer in degree now so yeah that's kind of how that can go um so pretty much mercury can join to venus alone though and with uranus this is very highly creative energy you guys so this could be a very good um, creative week. And then we have, you know, we finished the week with uh, Moon and Libra, which is also ruled by Venus, just like Taurus. So a lot of Venusian energy in the air. So high creativity, maybe thinking about how you can use your creativity to, um, you know, be innovative and stuff, but create something that in the long term can still generate money wealth and whatever okay so yes very good week for ideas for ideas to create things to make things with your hands is also mercury and venus together in taurus making things with your hands um have if you guys have noticed another thing that's very popular now this pop more popularized with uranus and taurus is self-care videos on youtube because you know youtube videos are ruled by uranus and also people making their own self-care products and selling them online and advertising them on like Instagram and stuff. That's also Uranus and Taurus. Taurus rules products, rules self-care, things that smell good, feel good, uh, things that make you look good and smell good and all of that, you know. So products like body butters, I've noticed a lot of people are, are making their own now. And even like spiritual products too, you know, like people are making um, spiritual candles and putting them together and selling them and, um, you know, sprinkling in some herbs and crystals and all that and just selling it. Uh, that's becoming more popularized with Uranus and Taurus because Taurus rules all of those things, things you find in nature, like the herbs and the crystals and all that, the, the scent 
of candles and, you know, the warm feel of the comfort of a burning candle. All Taurus shit, right? So very popular right now. Um, so yeah, these all these planets hitting Uranus and Taurus, bringing it more to the forefront, bringing more ideas to people on how they can join in and profit off of all the all the Taurus tings, right? So anyway, you guys, um, that is it for this week's forecast. It was a little longer, a little bit more to cover than usual. I hope you guys got something out of it. Um, once again, thank you guys for the kind words. Um, anybody who's also sent like a donation to my channel, I appreciate you. Anybody who's had the patience while I get through all of the mess of my life and, you know, and still get readings out to people, I appreciate it every single one of you guys too um don't forget you can still get insights from me with these 2021 yearly horoscopes on sale five dollars off through the rest of this month okay so um i will see you guys in my next video hope you have a good week and i'll talk to you soon all right peace